Hello, my name is Tim Aiken and I'm a director at ActivePlan. Impact is our online web application for the development of a client's brief. It has definable libraries of activities, fixtures, including ambient, fixed, loose, powered, piped, etc. Environmental requirements, heating, cooling, lighting and acoustics, all interlinked back to activities. These are applied to libraries of room types, which in turn are added to a version of a project brief. All the data is managed in the online database. When the client is ready, they provide bidders with a spreadsheet of the brief generated from the system. Bidders can define how they will meet the performance specification with design solutions and add their values against the clients. For example, a room may be bigger than asked for, or the balance between cooling and heating temperatures may marginally vary from the client's requirements. Impact allows them to change directly through the web interface application or by completing the spreadsheets and then import to update values. The client is able to run reports for comparison, change and a COBE output. The ActivePlan BIM Impact Connector is a plug-in application. It enables a two-way communication between the model spaces and the client brief using web services. For each model file, we store the connection information with the model so that when it is passed between different users, the connections are still there. However, only authenticated users are allowed the two-way access and these login details are stored on the user's own work areas. Hello, I'm going to demonstrate our Revit link to Impact. We have a design for a school, which is a generic design for a school. Already we've um, been through and we've created the design and put, all, put some spaces in as well. So I'm going to show you how we link that to the Impact web service. We have a plugin which we've created. So I click on the uh, Active Plan menu option. I'll show you how this is configured. Let's bring the window into the view. So that is the URL address of the web service. Those are my login details. So every user has to be authenticated. Now these are the details that are stored with the user, whereas the um, web service is stored with the actual model file. It's next. And that has now read the projects that I've got access to and for this particular project the versions of the brief and I'm on that brief there so that's all there is to that close that now on here we have a show the web uh, schedule of accommodation so I click that it will now go to the web service and read all of the uh, room information required. Now we've already imported um, or connected this uh, but there are a few rooms that haven't been connected and those rooms are identified by this uh, reddish band and the rooms that we've imported uh, these are the client room numbers and our application allows us to maintain the client room numbers and match them to room numbers inside the roof. Now you can see there that the room numbers aren't the same because those are the ones that I've decided I want to have on this particular uh, project inside Revit but it connects to the client's room and you can see that some rooms are on a different I think that's still on the same floor there the sports hall area I've not got a room number in my project so it's used the room number of, from the client. We can sort these by the columns we can also filter by different departments there's lots of things that we can do there and if we have uh, rooms that we want to remap then that will just display the rooms that aren't currently mapped to a uh, schedule um, schedule accommodation so I could remap map that room to another room so before I connect uh, or make the link I can actually do all the mapping and then um, create create that so what happens once that is connected so we're going to go to our schedule 
So I'll just switch on the project browser. So I've got a room here that I haven't placed, but we're going to go and have a look and see what we've, uh, what the application has done. It's imported the schedule and it's created a room schedule. So we'll just make that a little bit bigger. And I've just ordered it by the room numbers. So those are the client room numbers. And these are the room numbers that have been through the project. And one of them is not being placed. And I've already given it an allocation of a room number called GF09, which is an ITC suite. And so what I'm going to do is show you how we place that. And it's pretty standard. You go to the architecture menu. You go to the room area. And here we can see at the bottom we've got what's left, one room left there. And we'll just place it. And that's it, it's connected. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the Active Plan object query. So we're going to pull this window up here. I've just made the window. Um, fit within our screen. So now I'm going to click on a room and it's gone off to the server and found the data for that room. We're going to make these windows dockable with inside Revit and I'm sure you'll appreciate that the um, that what we're doing at the moment is um, fitting all this in so you can read the text. Uh, query another room, that's the textiles room so let's just go off and uh, find an arbitrary room. Well, it's not going to be an arbitrary room. We're going to look at the music room. I know that one. So we've got a large music room. The other thing that we've done with the a query object uh, tool is we've actually got three boilers here. And we can also go and get from our project database through to a project library, product library, and get the data for um, equipment. So here we've got a list of all the attributes and that particular boiler is the Hovel 150 and just to show the other one is different, there's a 125 and it's a different set of parameter data. So rather than manage the parameter data from within inside Revit, we're actually managing it inside a database. But this is how we can connect it and we can just pull those parameters in and put them onto uh, our objects as well. So this, um, but it does make uh, it, this a lot easier to manage. And of course, we've got the uh, the maintenance data as well. So let's go back to uh, looking at rooms. So if we go back to the music room, we're going to find this music room in the online brief. So I'm just going to get back to the music room there. And what we've got is a field here. I'm going to only change these field rounds here, maximum group size. Well, I know the maximum group size should actually be 35. So I'm just going to flip over to the ActivePlan uh, online database, which is called Impact, where the brief is managed. So log into the brief. And just out of interest, I'm actually not in the same building as the uh, servers. So all this is being done um, online so including the web the the web service so I'll go to the example school go to the versions choose the version that I'm working on go to manage briefs and I'll type in music as a room type and I know that it's 309 so if we want to just check that we'll flip back to Revit And that is the 309 room. Yep. So if I now go and edit that room, so I've got a pop up window here. So I'll just pull everything back into view. And if I go to the personnel information here, and if I just change the group size to 35 and update it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to knit back to the Revit project. Just pull up everything there. And if I just click out of there onto one room and then so we go to a practice room and then back to this room. 
can see that the value has now changed. And that's exactly the same for also the, the products with the product database. Which I'll show you how we do that. Just do the same thing. Just click on the product that 150 boiler. And now I'm going to go back to our web browser. Now I've got to get to the supplier database. Right, so I'm in our supplier database and it's the Hovel boiler. Here are the products and there is the 125 and the 150. We're going to edit the 150. So we'll go to the attributes and what I'll do is I'll change the operating temperature to 95. We'll just flip back to the Revit windows. See what we've got as the operating temperature is 85 at the moment for the 150 and I'm on the 150 and if I just go and do an update there and then flip back to the Revit project and then just click between the two go back to attributes and you can see it's now saying 95 so I'm going to change that back not that this is a fully operational commercial database at the moment it illustrates the principle. There we go. We're back to, back to where we were. There are two ways that we can generate the Kobe data. One is to use the Active Plan project database. But in this example, I'm going to show you how we do it just using tools that are readily available. And the one that I'm using is called Kobe Extensions. And Kobe Extensions is from a company called uh, CAD Microsystems, and they've done this for Autodesk. So once we've generated the spreadsheet, we've got a list of attribute data for the, for the boiler and then we import them into our Kobe data browser as a spreadsheet and once it's in the Kobe data browser we just go to schedules and go to the boilers and then look on the floors and they're on the ground floor and there they are just the locations and then if I click on boiler number one then we can see the instance attributes And if we go to the type attributes, there's all the type attributes for that particular type of boiler, uh, warranty, manufacturer, etc. That concludes our presentation of using the Active Plan Impact link for Revit. Thank you for watching, and I'll hope you'll check in on our channel again soon.